Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Red Hat Summit 2016. Brought to you by Red Hat. Now, here are your hosts, Stu Miniman and Brian Gracely. Welcome back, happy to welcome to the program a first time guest on theCUBE and fresh off the keynote, Sven Loberg, who is the open source lead, global open source lead for Accenture. Sven, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Great, so first time on the program, you know, we're, we're obviously quite familiar with Accenture, I think most of our audience is, but can you tell us a little bit about your background and your role at Accenture? Sure, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, thanks, thanks too. So, uh, yeah, what I do within Accenture, you mentioned open source, so part of our emerging technology practice and also then lead up open source. And so certainly those are very synergistic as we look to the future uh, of what we're doing to develop new capabilities, incubating new emerging technologies, and also then uh, looking to where those sources, are, sources of, of innovation are coming from. And a lot of that is, is open source based. It's really innovation is now seen as a, as a driver of innovation. Uh, and so the role is really working within Accenture as well as uh, externally Right to, to spread the, the word around open source and our involvement in uh, communities as well as getting uh, Accenture as a whole right to use more open source, contribute to open source uh, as we really kind of started to pivot around some of the new uh, technologies that are largely open source based when you think of the, the big data, you think of the web 2.0s, the analytics, all of those are open source for the most part and driven by open source technologies versus you know, some of the proprietary ones that maybe led uh, some of the previous uh, technology trends in the, in the, in the past. Okay. So. So, so obviously you've, you've got the partnership with Red Hat here. Can you speak to though the kind of the contribution, the, the breadth and the depth of uh, what Accenture does with open source? So absolutely, so you mentioned Red Hat. So yeah, we definitely have a, a number of open source uh, alliances that we work with. Red Hat certainly one of those strategic ones that we have. Uh, really how, how we do it, we, we combine some of our our industry expertise within, within open source, as far as whether it be components or just some of the innovation that we're thinking about to build various industry assets that leverage open source as well as those industry expertise uh, items. So whether it be around financial services or telecommunications, some of the things I talked about today at the, the keynote around Accenture Video Services or also our connected platform as a service as well as then some of the intelligent orchestration, all driven by open source. Uh, as well as now contributing a lot of those things to the community, uh, which is certainly a big, uh, big aspect of kind of what I look to do. When you think about Accenture, you mentioned you know, we are well known, very large, uh, and that uh, you know is exciting when you start thinking about the 40,000 job developers and other professionals that we have. What if we get five or 10 percent of those to start regularly contributing to uh, a particular open source uh, project? That that could be quite powerful. A lot of the things that. Uh, you know, we do on clients or do internally, right? Getting that more in the open, uh, driving that transparency and the innovation and collaboration with our clients. That's what's exciting as far as about it, what we're looking to do with open source around our strategy uh, as we gauge with the different uh, partners uh, that we have mm -hmm. as far as the different alliances uh, around, you know, Red Hat, you know, sorry, being, being one of those that certainly is, is strategic. Yeah, yeah. Do, do, do you have any, you know, you, you talked about what if, you know, is there a roadmap? Is there any, you know, how many people are actually contributing to open source or how you incent uh, people inside Accenture? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, kind of the journey that we've taken is, uh, you know, and it's not necessarily new, our, our contributions, it's just the, the, the scale and the, the pace of it. Uh, so, you certainly contributed to spring batch, you know, almost well over a decade now as far as uh, some of our early contributions that we've made. And, and really what it is as far as how can we accelerate that uh, of what we're, what we're doing within the community. So that's you know, in the sense of uh, what we've started to do around InterSource. So that was something that we started uh, about eight years ago now. So InterSource was kind of introducing the concept of community-driven development within the enterprise, uh, getting people to use kind of continuous integration, continuous delivery pipelines uh, as part of the, the tools they're using, but also then driving the, the culture aspect as well. Uh, was important. That was something that we did. We now have over 3,000 projects internally. You know, what we'd like to do as far as we now have our, our open source uh, GitHub page, right, and turn a lot of those things that were done internally now, let's now put those externally. So think about if we had 3,000 internally, uh, think about even if we had 10% of those right now being you know, open source. And what we've seen interesting is as we've opened the, them into the, the broader community, like our open DevOps platform, for example, completely open source based around just that DevOps, 
uh, and the CI/CD aspects of it, and using things like OpenShift or using things like containerization technologies as well, is we've seen an increase internally as far as to the contribution of those projects. So some of these projects have been around for two or three years uh, internally, but now if we've, we've open sourced them, we've got a whole new group of people within Accenture that are excited about contributing to those projects, which is uh, you know, at first somewhat counterintuitive. We've now made it you know, visible, maybe that's scary, but what we're seeing is, particularly when we think about Accenture, there's a lot of millennials, and that's what they crave, right? They want to be kind of part of communities. They want kind of a bit of the external uh, recognition. We also do a bit of gamification around it as well, right? So we try to reward then people that are doing some of the co top contributions. Uh, to those different projects and you know, also giving you know, greater you know, kind of points then to people that create new projects, uh, which is kind of how we're looking to accelerate it, right? And translate that to what we are doing internally as well as externally. Then also kind of at an enterprise level, working with some of our folks within our products and platform group, what's now previously was called Accenture Software, which is okay, how can we take a lot of those things that were previously you know, proprietary or maybe even used open source, but uh, they weren't necessarily kind of highlighted in that sense, but a lot of them are now becoming platform SaaS solutions. So it's all about how can they use more open source. Now there's a number of, of reasons they're doing that, certainly because of a cost aspect to get the, the price per, uh, you know, uh, per use down, but also because a lot of the innovation they're seeing is simplifying you know, some of their stack as well, where in some cases they may have had three or four different proprietary tools in there, and now they can replace them with, uh, with an end-to-end -end solution that's open source based. Yeah, Accenture works with some of the largest companies in the world, almost every industry in the world. What's the pulse that you're hearing from customers in terms of, you know, not only open source, but just, you know, wanting to use innovative new technologies, wanting to sort of change their business models? Uh, what, what are you hearing from them, and, and what are the types of things that are, you know, driving, you know, that you're hearing from them that are driving your open source initiatives? So, I mean, certainly a lot of things that I take uh, time talking with clients about is kind of their next generation application architectures. Uh, and so this is really an opportunity for them to, to reevaluate kind of their strategy, their people strategy, uh, where you know, maybe before uh, they were saying, hey, we're going to have really specialization uh, in what our folks do, as well as our expectations of uh, some of the you know, partners that we work with, like, a, you know, so like an Accenture. Yeah. Uh, and some of those, right, driving, so we need now more full stack developers. Somebody that can be holistic, that can work within smaller teams, which means they need to have a greater tool set uh, to do some of those implementations. And they're also seeing it, frankly, as an opportunity to take some of those emerging technologies and kind of insource them in the sense of build those capabilities uh, themselves. But then they also get to an inflection point where they now need someone like Accenture uh, to be part of what some of the new, uh, the new reference implementations they're building uh, and, and then scale them out. And certainly that's where we work with them uh, extensively, certainly some of the initial implementations, but then also when they need to scale. Uh, so certainly those are some trends that we're seeing around as, as clients then look at that. And certainly you know, the open source angle there is of course a lot of what they're then looking to do is a next generation application architecture is leveraging open source, which also triggers a couple other behaviors. Uh, so it's a different way of doing talent acquisition. Mm. You know, so for example, uh, you know, before you know, maybe it's been a proprietary stack that they were using, and they needed to kind of attract you know some some of the millennials. And how do they do that? Certainly, open source is a big uh, a, a big magnet for that, right? How they can bring in talent, but also then they understand that that technology uh, that the uh, the millennials are working on is coming, coming from an open source community and that they may not necessarily be around for you know, 10, 15, 20 years anymore. They're more likely to just be there for a couple years. And so it's the expectation of how can they still attract those. But then the interesting thing is the aspect that they'll also then leave, but then if they're working on some of those projects, they'll also continue to contribute, yeah. which is an interesting aspect. Well, now you're actually still getting benefit and kind of the relationships that you built within those communities after they're no longer employees, which you know, it's certainly kind of an interesting twist and kind of the, the benefit of, of them also being part of communities, which also means, okay, that it's going back to you know, the health of the communities and drawing innovation, the, the importance of engagement and participation uh, in those, right? Which is then kind of you're asking, kind of what, what is now clients think of Forest Accenture, which is what we're seeing also is that there's an expectation, right? That uh, you're not just a user uh, of a particular open source component or project. Right, to, to have expertise, that means you're involved in those communities, you're contributing. Uh, so it's very common now to say, okay, well, what are you contributing to this 
particular community if, if you say you're going to bid on this particular piece of work, right? And that's certainly an, an important aspect as well, right? Because now it really matters to them, uh, certainly whether you have the expertise, but also are you, are you also giving to that community that now I'm dependent on as far as as a client? So those are a couple of different things that we're seeing as far as as, you know, clients use more open source and then their expectations, you know, around what we're doing and other partners are doing uh, grows as well. Yeah, so it sounds like pretty radical change around intellectual property ownership, you know, at human assets, human capital, keeping them around, you know, thinking about them as a community as opposed to individuals maybe, uh, you know, thinking about longevity of projects and so forth. All that sounds like it's radically changing kind of because of open source, because of the new millennial generation coming in, different workforce, different expectations, I would think. That's right, Brian, Ex exactly. So, and that, you know, certainly we'll continue to do plenty of proprietary development, right? And frankly, a lot of the proprietary uh, product companies today, right? They're, they're recognizing that as well. They're adopting open source. Uh, and so they're also going to pivot a bit as well, certainly. Uh, and so there is a bit of a, a balance there. Uh, but it, yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. definitely seeing you know, a lot of disruption. Right? Really, it's just what we coach our, our clients and try to do ourselves is we like to be the ones disrupting being, you know, versus being the one disrupted, right? right. Uh, and that's really what's going to, you know, having that agility and the ability to change is, is really going to be what's, you know, Keeping, uh, you know, keeping us as well as our clients as high performers in the market. Yeah. Sven, so in your keynote uh, just earlier, you announced uh, increased participation and increased support uh, for the Linux Foundation. Can you explain why, why Accenture's doing this and, and what's important about mm -hmm. it? Yeah, absolutely. Good, good question, good comment as far as, so we did that in combination a little bit with our, our cybersecurity lab uh, that we just launched in, uh, in Tel Aviv in Israel, uh, which is our, our seventh uh, lab, which is really about kind of harnessing some of the R&D and the innovation that we're doing, in this case, around some of the cybersecurity uh, things that are going on, obviously the importance of that to, to our clients. Uh, so certainly there was the aspect of, okay, what could we then, from an innovation pr perspective, bring? But also it was the idea is that we, particularly for, in this case, the core infrastructure initiative as part of the Linux Foundation, was that there was a, an underlying uh, need and importance to be involved, not just in some of the kind of more sexy kind of cyber uh, security innovations, but also recognize that we need to be contributing and giving back to some of the underlying technologies, really, that sometimes get forgotten about. Uh, some things like, you know, as far as how to keep time on the, on the internet, the network time protocol things, or open SSL, which people only start caring about when there's a, a vulnerability uh, identified, right, and then everyone cares about it, but, you know, what happens over the, the, the time when it's not in the news, right? Uh, which is hopefully you know, the greater portion of that. And so the core infrastructure initiative was a way that we could be contributing and kind of building right, that recognition internally as well as externally, the importance of that, and also somewhat uh, set a precedent. So in this case, the, the, the core initiative uh, is really led by a lot of the, you know, the traditional uh, kind of technology companies from a, a software perspective, the Cisco's and others that, okay, that's part of their core business, right, as far as network and aspects, but, but what about the system integrators as well? So that was what we were setting the tone there, saying, hey, as a, as a global system integrator, this is important uh, to us, it's important to our clients, really, as the broader ecosystem, and so we wanted to kind of set the tone there as kind of a leader in that space, hoping then that others will follow. Excellent. All right. uh, Sven, I want to give you the last word here. As uh, people come out of Red Hat Summit, you know, wh wh where does Accenture uh, fit into the discussion? You know, wh wh what are some of the top conversations you're having that you'd want the broad audience to understand about? So certainly uh, there's been a lot of buzz. So the summit's been a, you know, a fantastic event this year. Certainly lots of collaboration, which is what you would expect from a, a group of open source community participants getting together and doing you know, certainly what we're seeing around our connected platform as a service. A lot of talk certainly around IoT, a lot of great uh, demos this week. So we're seeing a lot of buzz around that. People are certainly resonating with some of the things that we've done in the industry space around IoT uh, and looking to see how can we partner with them uh, and bringing it to things like our Liquid Studio in, in Redwood City uh, where we can kind of innovate and uh, do early prototypes for them and bring it to market faster. Uh, and so those are some of the things that we're excited about as we uh, we move forward you know, with, uh, with open source as well as our clients as we both kind of take that journey, as you're pointing out, that it's, it's really kind of a, a revolution uh, of types as it becomes a very disruptive but also beneficial change that's going on within the marketplace. All right, well, Sven Loberg, uh, talking about communities, welcome to the CUBE alumni uh, community also. Uh, thanks for giving us the updates on Accenture. We'll be back with more coverage from Red Hat Summit 2016 here in San Francisco. You're watching the CUBE.